Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining me. This is Dave Briner from Synergist Technologies. Today I'm going to take a look at rigid groups in Fusion 360. So when I work on certain projects that may require equipment that I do not have the time or expertise to create, maybe something like this uh, two-inch gate valve, uh, I often go to GrabCAD, uh, GrabCAD.com, and you can find a a wealth of information here. So there's all kinds of uh, models. Uh, some of these are just renderings, pictures, um, but a, there's a lot of different, you know, a lot of different things you can uh, you can reach into here. Um, so now uh, a lot of these come in step format. A lot of them come in uh, Autodesk. Uh, many of them come in SolidWorks, uh, but all of these you can download and um, easily upload to Fusion 360. So, and that's pretty much what I did right here. So I, I downloaded a step file and then uploaded this step file right into um, Fusion 360. So with any model, now this goes with any software, once you um, import a step file, you're going to lose all constraints. Now. Whoever built this, uh, they did a real nice job. Everything's here just the way I like it. Um, all of this is one single part, so you can see that you know I, I can't move anything here except for all these fasteners. So um, what I want to do is I can I can easily uh, utilize a, a feature in Fusion called Rigid Group. Now you can see right here Rigid Group they they lock uh, parts into relative position. Of a selected component, so yeah, th this is pretty much the way. I don't need any moving uh, parts, so I'm not too worried about other joints. I just need this to build around, uh, to you know, use it as a placeholder, and it has got the relative size what I'm looking for. So, like any um, anything you bring in a step file, the first thing we have to do is is ground uh, one part. So. Right here is uh, is the gate body, so I'm just going to right click on that and uh, ground it. So with that being grounded, I like to uh, constrain everything right to it. So what I can do is I can select the first part, and since uh, I do not have, I don't, I'm not going to have any movable parts, I'll just select everything, and I think that works okay. So. Uh, first, I should have started uh, rigid group. Uh, everything's selected, so I got 43 selected, and I'm just going to say OK. And you're going to see right here that I can't move anything. So now I have a part that everything is constrained, and uh, this is going to work right in my assembly, my model. So that's one way to work. Now the other is now here's a hydraulic cylinder I created this years ago in Inventor. And I uploaded this into Fusion, but again, uh, it's going to lose all of its constraints. So um, this this isn't a big problem for me. I can I can uh, do everything that I want. So, and I uh, what I need to do is isolate this piston off of uh, the rest of it. So I just happen to know that um, you know there's going to be these parts right here: the rod, the head. There's three rings, and then there's an assembly nut on the back. So first of all, uh, like everything else, um, I'm going to uh, ground the part, and I'll just ground that top one, the cylinder. That works fine for me. And I'll start my uh, rigid group, and I'm going to select everything. So I'll come down here, click to the last one. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to come up and uh, I'm going to deselect. So I'm going to hold the control key and deselect my rod, the head, the three rings, and that last nut. And I'm going to say OK. So now everything is locked in position except now I still have my piston rod. So. Uh, let's do that again. I'm going to make another, since nothing on this piston head or the rod is going to move 
uh, relative to itself, I can then create a rigid joint and I'm going to go back and select those. So I'll select the rod and hold the control key and I'll take the piston head, the three O-rings and that nut. That looks okay to me and I'm going to say okay. So right there I have my two parts as I need them. All right. Um, so what do I want to do? Um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I want to now I can use a joint. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to use a joint and that joint is going to be a cylindrical joint and I'm going to let's see from there to there. And that looks pretty good so I'm going to say OK. Alright. And what I'm going to do is um, and it works fine. I mean, this is pretty much just the way I want to. I want to see it. Um, I think in the next video I'm going to show you how to apply um, some simple joint limits. Uh, they work pretty well, so I'll do that on a on a separate one. But you can see here, you know, I've got two rigid groups, and I I can still use other joints and. Um, continue to rebuild my my step model that I didn't have to you know waste a lot of time going in and uh, build from scratch so it can really be a nice time saver uh, just something for you to think about so if you like this video click like below or leave a comment let me know if you have any suggestions of a topic you would like to learn more about so that's it uh, thanks for joining me and until next time this is Dave Reiner